SSDI and Planning for Work, a Griffin Hammes production tailored for Idaho. Do you receive Social Security disability insurance? Have you ever wondered, what would happen if I work? Well, I'm here to tell you that you can work, have more money, and keep the safety nets you need. The key is to make a plan. What do I need to make a plan about? Well, making a plan helps you to know ahead of time what will happen with your SSDI benefits. First, decide how many hours you can work and how much you can make an hour so you know what your monthly earning goal will be. Then you'll need to figure out if earning that amount will cause any changes to your SSDI. See, SSDI is an all-or-nothing benefit. You either get all of it or none of it. Whoa, that makes me nervous, you know, about working. Well, I've got some good news for you there. You have choices. Some people plan to get a job that pays more than their SSDI, so they're okay with it stopping. Other people can't do that right now, so their plan is to keep getting SSDI while they work. You decide what makes sense for you. Huh. Well, tell me, how does Social Security decide if I'll get my SSDI or not? They compare your work to a monthly limit called Substantial Gainful Activity, or SGA for short. This helps them decide if your SSDI should continue or stop. In 2020, SGA is $1,260 a month, or $2,110 a month for people with blindness. Let's look at a couple of examples. This is Joe. Hi, Joe. Joe gets $925 of SSDI. Now, he knows of a job where he could work 15 hours a week as a bookkeeper, making $11 an hour. That works out to $720 a month. And that's low enough that his SSDI would continue. So, Joe will have $925 of SSDI, plus $720 in wages, which is a total of $1,645 in monthly income. Really? Well, that's great. Let's look at one more example. This is Belinda. Hello, Belinda. She gets $1,100 of SSDI. Now, Belinda is finishing a nursing degree and plans to work 40 hours a week making $20 an hour, which works out to $3,464 a month. She made a plan and knows this level of work will make her SSDI stop, but Belinda understands she'll have more money than if she doesn't work. She knows $3,464 in wages is a lot more than $1,100 of SSDI. If Belinda worked fewer hours to keep her wages below the $1,260 SGA level and kept her SSDI, she would have less than $2,360 a month altogether. That would still be much less than the $3,464 Belinda plans to make as a nurse, even after taxes. So she doesn't mind her SSDI stopping. Okay, but what if she, um, what if Belinda can't work and then she needs to get her SSDI back? Well, that's a great question. The SSDI program has safety nets called work incentives. Belinda can use one of them to get her SSDI quickly restarted. Really? So she has more money and she can get her SSDI back if she needs to? Well, I like the sound of that. Yeah, it is great. You can see how it's possible to work, have more money, and keep the safety nets you need. Do those SSDI work incentives help in any other way? Oh yeah, there are a lot of SSDI work incentives. Some let you keep SSDI even when you earn more than SGA. Some work incentives let you restart your SSDI quickly if it stops, just like you saw with Belinda. And other work incentives let you keep Medicare, even if your SSDI stops. And I think I'm ready to make a plan to work, so how do I do that? That's another great question. Go to ssa.gov slash redbook and read the section on SSDI Employment Supports, and if you'd like to talk to someone about SSDI and work, call Social Security's Ticket to Work helpline at 1-866-968-7842. For additional information about going to work, check out the resources on the Able to Work website 
at abletowork.idaho.gov. Knowledge is power. Take time to learn more about SSDI and work.